Welcome to our Woken Speaker Series event for September. As you know, we get together every month and have an inspirational woman uh, in the automotive industry uh, and just to share with us their story, their lessons, um, their career, uh, the highs and the lows, all of that so that we can be inspired as we navigate our journey in the automotive industry. Uh, we're so excited just to continue the work we've been doing uh, with Women in, of Color Automotive Network. And uh, there's so much more to come, but uh, we, are, we are thrilled at um, the enthusiasm that we have seen over this last year. We celebrated our, our one year anniversary actually uh, this past month. So um, we're here to, to highlight, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're here to feature Jessica Gonzalez, um, uh, full disclosure, you know, she works for Santander, which is a partner of, of my company, Autofy. And I, you know, the first time I met her, uh, she didn't know it, but, but I definitely put her on my list of, I have to have this woman speak at one of our Women of Color Automotive uh, Network events. And so I'm so glad that we're here. She is a director of digital strategy. And if you're not familiar with Santander, they are one of the largest auto finance companies um, in the industry. Uh, I believe they work with over 2 million consumers that are financing through Santander. And so if you're, if you're familiar with auto retail or the auto finance business, you'd be familiar with Santander. Um, and Jessica has a, had a long career and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I also wanna just acknowledge that this month and it's really September 15th through October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. And so uh, what I love about WOCAN is that you know, we, I, we honor all identities, right? There's not only us as women, but there's also our, our, our race, our heritage, our ethnicity. So I uh, just want to give a shout out to the Latinas in the group, the Hispanic women in the group, um, and all the contributions that you, your family, your friends, um, your culture has uh, contributed to our country and making it what we are. So um, thank you so much. And we see you, we hear you, we are you, we're Wokan. So we're gonna jump right in. Um, and, and before we jump in, uh, just wanna talk a little bit about our founders and who we are. And I'll turn it over to Erica. Absolutely, my favorite part. Love talking about the wonderful women in automotive, our founders, Patrice Banks, whose birthday is today. So if you go on social media, make sure you hit her up for a happy birthday. She couldn't join us, but she's here in spirit. Patrice Banks, who is the owner and CEO of Girls Auto Clinic, if you're not familiar, it is a female car garage where all the technicians are women, where you can get your hair done and your nails done while you get your oil changed. Completely innovative. Uh, she's such a great and wonderful person. We also have Amanda Gordon, CEO and founder of Gojo Auto. And she is the first black woman to own a dealership in the state of Colorado, doing some phenomenal things. I think she's had three record breaking months in a row, just doing fantastic things. And it's the end of the month. So as you know, Amanda could not make it with us today, but she is also here in spirit. And then we have our wonderful president, Carrie Wise, who is also the VP of marketing at Auto5, the president of WOCAN and Automotive News Top 100 Leading Women. She's a motivational speaker. She spoke at events like NADA, Digital Dealer. She has a big one coming up. She's constantly out there on diversity panels, really, really putting it up for uh, WOCAN, putting our name out there, helping us get sponsors. Uh, she's one of my closest friends and I love her, Carrie Wise. And you know, it's always awkward to introduce yourself. So I will jump here in here and introduce Erica Wells. Uh, she is a sales manager at VW of Marion. And if you don't know, she just made a huge move across the country. Talk about taking risks, right? Moving your entire family for a better opportunity. And, and, and it's worked out, Erica, right? It's been a great move. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, what's been great is that Erica has been in this industry um, for a long time, like many of us. And, you know, I think over this last year, if not last two years, she's really uh, reaped the rewards of all of her hard work. And so if you didn't hear, uh, she was just acknowledged by Automotive News as a 40 under 40, which is a major, 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 major achievement. I'm so jealous because I aged out of that. <laughs> So kudos to you for winning that award. Uh, and I and there's more to come, so much more to come. She has also been all over Clubhouse, 
um, all over different speaking engagements over this last year and has been a real shining superstar in our industry. So, uh, so proud to have Erica as my vice president of WOCAN and my right hand man. So we'll continue to jump in enough niceties about each other. <laughs> so if you are not a member, you should definitely be a member because WOCAN is so much more than just this one Zoom recording we do every month. I mean, we do our monthly speaker series, but we also offer educational workups. We do these quarterly meetups and we have one that's coming soon where you get to meet other women in automotive, kind of like speed dating, but with car girls. It's so much fun. Uh, we have our private Facebook group where we really have a community and a tribe and an opportunity to talk about our wins, our losses, the challenges. It's private so we can really have conversations amongst our ourselves, our scholarships. We gave away scholarships the, earlier this year. And, you know, we, we really just want to offer as much as we can to as many as we can. And that's what the membership is all about, is for us to have community, to have relationships, and have opportunities like today, where we get to, ha to uh, highlight wonderful women like Jessica Gonzalez and hear her story. So if you're not a member, join. If you are a member, you need to be tagging a friend and getting them to join so we can grow this network to be as big as it possibly can. Yeah, and we are at about 500 members, I believe, so far. It's crazy because 10% of our members are allies, which is really amazing. So, you know, white men, uh, men in general, white women, um, and, you know, shout out to, to a few of you who are on here, like Jeff Daniel, he's always on here every single week joining us. So um, it's been amazing to see the growth and, and the people all over the industry that have been excited about WOCAN. So we're going to continue on. Uh, we want to uh, not forget to acknowledge our sponsors who help us put on all the programming that you see, um, the events, the scholarships, all of that uh, we could not do without our, our sponsors. And I start off with uh, what I call the three of these are our day ones. I mean, all of these companies jumped on very early on when we launched a year ago. First of all, Subaru, um, they are one of the companies that are really tied to their community. Um, we know that Subaru is a cause-based company, not just a vehicle company. And so we were so proud that they supported Wokan. Um, Dr. Monica Curry, you know, I, I speak to her a lot. She's very invested in our group and helping us to be successful. So uh, thank you so much to Subaru. True Car is my old company I worked at, but they didn't have to sponsor us and they did. And so, so proud to have True Car on. They're very big on, on diversity initiatives this year. Um, and I'm not sure if we have anybody on from True Car, uh, but uh, no, I don't see anybody at this point, but they're typically on and we want to thank True Car. And then I can't forget Car Global. Um, they own a lot of different companies in the automotive industry. And we're also very early on, um, Kristen Lampkin is their head of DEI. And you know she reached out to me very early on to support. They're so big on a diverse workforce and a culture. Uh, and as part of that, they have supported us. And I do wanna acknowledge Kristen and maybe you can unmute and say something, but Kristen actually was just acknowledged as an auto remarketing 40 under 40. And I just heard about that. So Kristen, are you, are you on? You want to have an acceptance speech or say something? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you, Wokan, um, for your support and just pouring into us women of color. So I'm just grateful. I've only been in this industry for a year, but having Wokan has really helped me and empowered me. So I'm excited here, Jessica. And again, Carr is so, so excited for this partnership. And so thank you guys so much again for our, the acknowledgement. Yeah, we are so moving the needle, like moving the needle, right? Absolutely. And I, I suggest you follow Kristen. She has um, an informative social media and she's also like just fun. Like if you follow her, um, lots of fun, fun to watch. So uh, I also just suggest that if any of these companies, if you're interested in, in, in careers and jobs within Subaru and True Car and Car, uh, we know people, right? Like Kristen, like Dr. Monica, um, and we can we can make those connections for you and obviously uh, buy their products, right? If you're a consumer dealer um, interested, we, we definitely want to support our, our sponsors. So thank you so much. Um, now I'm going to promote myself a little bit, but this is really about promoting digital dealers. So I'm going to be at digital dealer. I know Erica is going to be at digital dealer. I'm actually speaking at two different sessions. Digital dealer is October 12th through 14th. 
Uh, so what's great is I have a session on DEI. I'm part of a panel and Sandy uh, is part of the panel. Sandy, I don't know if you're you're unmuted or not, but uh, did you want to just share a little bit? She'll be moderating the panel. Sandy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Um, I, this is so exciting. And I really so appreciate Digital Dealer for giving us the space to have this, this really courageous conversation that needs to be had. And the panelists, um, uh, like Carrie said, I'm moderating. The panelists are amazing. So Carrie, of course, is one of our panelists, Damon Lester, Edward McKissick, who is uh, the, I believe he's the first DEI, mm -hmm. uh, chief DEI officer in retail. He's also VP of HR. And we also have Sherry Schultz, who's um, the chief HR officer at Walzer Automotive. So th they're doing some great stuff. Um, so if you're going to be a digital dealer or, you know, you know, somebody is that tell them to come and see us. Absolutely. And uh, that was so exciting because I think we'll be tackling it from all angles, you know, from auto retail, from groups like WOCAN, from NAMAD. So I think uh, this is a group effort in, in changing this industry. And it's going to be a really important conversation that Sandy is leading. And then uh, I'm also speaking on digital retailing, the seven habits of highly effective digital retailers. This is my day job. Um, and really excited uh, about sharing some insights and best practices on that as well. Um, so come see us. Um, my company will have a booth. I, I, I definitely, if you're going to be there, send me a note, uh, Carrie at wocautonetwork.com so that I can make sure that we meet up for dinner or drinks or something um, while we're all there. And actually, let me just say one more thing, and I'm kind of throwing this out on the fly. Um, if you want to go to Digital Dealer, Wilcan wants to, send, wants to send you. So we have not promoted this at all. I'm just off the fly saying this that uh, we want to pay for one of you to go. So we got one ticket. We got um, uh, your flight and your hotel for, for two nights. And so if you want to go, send uh, an email to hello at wocautonetwork.com. Hello at wocautonetwork.com, subject digital dealer. And in that email, let us know why you want to go to digital dealer. Let us know how it's going to help you enrich your career, whatever you want to share with us. And then we'll pick somebody. This is going to be a quick turnaround because we got to buy that flight by Monday because it's, it's literally on October 12th through 14th. So if you can go for even two days, um, we'll, we'll send you and it's going to be well worth your time. You'll be connecting with some of the big, big movers and shakers across the automotive industry. This is a digital marketing retail type of um, conference. So if, the, if you're interested, send us a note, hello at wocautonetwork.com. You see how we are? We are nimble. We can basically put promotions and scholarships together on the fly and go. So and if you need the time off and need one of us to vouch for you, we will call your boss and tell them that Wokan sponsored you last minute. And that's why you need the time off. So don't worry about that. Yes, I think if you can come for even one night, I think it's well worth worth your time. Um, such a, such an amazing event. You can go to I think it's digitaldealer.com if you want to get a little bit more information before you um, send that in. So uh, we're excited to have one, one of you join us at Digital Dealer and we'll be doing that for other conferences. So if you know of other automotive conferences that you think we should be sending people to, like we want more women of color to be at these events because you would never believe the jobs that are that are discussed at these events, the networking, the business, all of that is done. And I got to say that we're oftentimes left out of those uh, uh, conversations. So we're going to enable that and, and, and send one of you and to, to other events as well. All right. Woo. I, that felt like a lot that we covered. So we're, we're going to jump right into our speaker. As I mentioned, uh, her name is Jessica Gonzalez, and she is a director of digital strategy for Santander um, Automotive. They are automotive finance company uh, that works with consumers that are looking to, to finance their vehicles. They work with about 2.6 million consumers 
Um, and they're also working with dealers as well, right? In, 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 in connecting those dealers with, with these consumers. So um, they work on both sides of the equation in terms of um, the automotive uh, purchase experience. She has an impressive career that spans over 15 years leading finance, leading operations and strategy at major companies like Santander, uh, Visa, Dell. She's also very passionate about DEI uh, and she served as a leader uh, in their Santander diversity uh, council, it, uh, specifically the Hispanic Employee Resource Group. Um, so we're going to hear her story and her lessons and her journey, um, not only in automotive, but she spent a lot of her time outside of automotive. And so, so excited to introduce Jessica Gonzalez. Jessica, you there? Yeah. Hear me? Yay, I feel like this is where we should like clap a little or, or snap or something <laughs> while you pull I'm in. I'm trying to share my screen, but it's saying. Oh, yeah, hold on. Let me um, see. I think I didn't get, enable you. So, can you do it now? I do it. Okay. All right. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. We can see it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here tonight. Um, I am, I love uh, having these engagements. I always say yes, it's a thing of me. <laughs> So if you need a free speaker, I am here to, you know, really talk, talk your all's ears off. But um, thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you, Erica, for such great um, introductions. And I really, really appreciate it. And the great opportunity, I think, um, like you said, Carrie, representation is something that I'm really big advocate for. I think it's really, really important that we get out there and talk. Um, as a Mexican American, I think that there's a lot of times that we don't talk culturally. Um, and we have a lot to learn from um, other, you know, uh, cultures that are actually more active and more vocal than us. So we're trying to get out there and make sure that we are represented and talked to. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, as Carrie said, I am the Director of Digital Strategy for Santander Consumer USA. Um, I have gotten all approvals to speak here. So if y'all have any questions uh, <laughs> about Santander, I would be happy to answer them as well. Um, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is kind of what you usually think of as a resume, um, but I'm gonna kind of go into my resume from a very personal journey. Um, because, you know, y'all can look at my LinkedIn and figure out all the places I worked and all the good stuff that I've done. Um, and this is really an experience of, you know, lessons learned and what I've kind of seen in the jobs that I've learned. I'm going to start with my experience. Um, so like Harry said, I started my career at Perot Systems, which is uh, now Dell. Um, at Perot Systems, what I really learned at there was integrity and compassion, um, mentorship matters, and, and loyalty. The reason why that's such an important aspect of my whole career and core as a leader now. Um, I started there when I was 18 years old in 2005, um, really, really focused on, you know, working 50, 60 hours. I was really excited to have, you know, a corporate career, started as an intern, and then they hired me on full time. Um, when I was there, I was just so excited. You know, I, I didn't really care about school. I was really, really focused on my career and the day-to-day -day job. Um, and it really was really exciting because I had a lot of allies as mentorships. Um, I had a lot of white executive men take me underneath their wing and really teach me the ropes of um, really corporate strategy. Um, and I really understood a lot of it. Um, while Perot will always have a place in my heart is because um, in 2006, I got pregnant. Um, I, I had a really, really high risk pregnancy. And because of that, I decided to go ahead and leave Poro Systems. Um, they gave me the flexibility to work from home, um, but because I was so high risk and had so much stress that I decided that it was really time for me to focus on you know, my child and make sure that everything was, was okay. So I had my son, he was in the NICU for quite a bit of time and he was able to, you know, now he's 14 years old, you, you saw him, you wouldn't recognize that he, was, he had such a really hard struggle. The doctors didn't give him 24 hours to live, but um, he really, really, um, you know, fought. He was a fighter from start. And so um, as soon as I was able and ready to come back to work, Perot Systems opened their arms welcoming to me and they accepted me back in. They found me a spot, um, a job. I went back to doing corporate strategy, all the things I love. Um, and Perot Systems to this day, if one of those leaders calls me, I am ready to, you know, answer the call. <laughs> what do you need? Do you need people? What do you... And I will advocate for Pro Systems, um, Pro family. Um, I treat them as like really my own family because they were such a such a huge support system. Um, and the way that Pro really leads is that if a leader you know gets promoted, um, then you know the, the people on their team is going to get promoted. They're going to move up. Um, and so all of their organizations. If you talk to anybody that works for the Pro family, Hillwood as an example currently, but any of the other um, 
there, there's other companies that Ross Perot also started. Um, they'll tell you the same thing, that it's just a culture of, of really loyalty and respect. And so that was something that I just really, really carried on, on with me as well in my career. Then I left, um, I left Pro Systems. Um, I went to Visa. Uh, at the time I was uh, married, my husband was uh, in the military and he was getting deployed and he was also moving around. Um, he was in special operations. And so um, we really thought Visa was a really good move for me because I was able to work from home and have flexibility in kind of what I wanted to do with my career. Um, and it was a really great opportunity for me. So I moved there, I spent 10 years with Visa. It was really, really great work, really fun work. Um, but I also really learned the value and support system, not only with my husband, but also with my family, um, because there's a lot of movement. Um, I also think at Visa, I really learned to be able to understand where I wanted myself and that it was okay. I think a lot of times as women, we say, okay, well, I want my career first, or I want my kids first, or I want my husband first. And I don't really think that you have to do that because everybody has a personal struggle and everybody's going through something. And I think that at the time when I was doing corporate America, it was really, really, you know, we didn't talk about that. Nobody saw, I worked from home. Nobody ever saw me pregnant. I always really hit it. I had four kids while I was working at Visa within that 10 years time span. I gave up a lot of promotions. I gave up a lot of movement within an organization because I really wanted to focus on what was important for me. I had a really big life challenge as well when I was there. Um, not only, you know, having kids, but um, I had a daughter and she passed away whenever I was at Visa. Um, Visa, like again, Pro was, was really there for me as well. Um, they gave me seven months off, um, let me move all the way. My husband got out of the military. We came home to Texas. Um, and like I said, that support system, we left everything we had and we came to Texas and we started over because like I said, those really life-changing moments, you really realize what's really important to you. And that's always at my core is, is my family. Um, and so, you know, like I said, I think that as women, we're always expected to choose one or the other. Um, I've really dedicated a lot of my life to my career. Um, but like I said, my core is always going to be my family. And I think that a lot of work-life balance, we talk about that a lot. We talk about that a lot right now, especially in corporate America. And I think it's really important to know that work-life balance without a support system doesn't exist. You can't have work-life balance, even if people are flexible with you and, and helping you. Um, and it's a privilege that, you know, you're not always afforded, right? I think that people don't talk about that enough is that um, sometimes you have to work 50 hours. Sometimes you have to work 60 hours. And, you know, it, it's great for an ideal to have work-life balance, but sometimes life is hard. And I think that it's so important to make sure that you have that support system because when those challenges come up, if you don't have that support system, um, you know, it's really, really easy to go to a bad place. And I think that um, that's really, you know, we, we especially right now, especially corporate, we, we hear so much about work-life balance, mental health, um, all of the things that we're doing. But at the end of the day, like I said, we have to acknowledge that not everyone has that privilege um, and we need to really make sure that we're supporting each other. So I think like uh, networks like Wokan and everything that y'all are doing here tonight is so crucial because you really have to have that support system, your family, you know, who, wherever you find it at, make sure you reach out to those people and tell them what you're going through so that they can help. Like I said, my support system was outside of my work. Visa was very supportive, but I actually left Visa because I didn't feel comfortable really coming back to work after that event happened. And so I started looking, you know, for another position. It was a very, you know, uncomfortable. So once everything happened, um, I went over, I went to Santander, me and my husband, we were in Texas, we had kind of calmed the storms and I had been looking for a while, but I knew the next career move that I wanted. I really wanted to make it count. I wanted to be focused. I wanted to move back into an organization that I would spend a while with um, because like I said, you know, my core is family, loyalty. That's the, those are things that really, really matter to me. I mean, when I found at Santander, you know, we decided I it was ready for me to focus on myself. And like I said, it was really important to have that support system. Prior, I had really given up a lot so that I could be there for my family, see my kids grow and really have that opportunity. And then, you know, I wanted, I was ready to go back into the office. And so I went to Santander, full-fledged, ready to just really, really focus on my career. And I, that's what I did. I, I really um, focused on what I wanted to do, movement, gave it all to my career again. Um, and I found a lot of authentic leadership. What I found at Santander is, is really a movement. Um, and, and it was really, you know, where we are as a time and, and kind of culturally. Um, like I said, I came from a place where you never talked about your husband or your, your personal life. 
Um, I really kept that out. Nobody ever saw me pregnant. Nobody really knew about my kids. You know, God forbid people would ask if I had how many kids. I mean, it was something just, you know, where we were at a time. And, and it was something not so much ashamed about, but um, just I felt like it didn't benefit me to talk about it. But what I realized is that as I built my career and my team, the, the, what people thought of me was not representative of who I am as a person. Um, you know, I got called really direct, so, you know, the B word. And, and the, what I was was, you know, really focused at work, but no one knew the side of me. Um, and people that I hired that I had, you know, known for 20 years or um, had kind of gone through the journey with me that, you know, I really respected. I've hired somebody that I went to college with. Um, they were really astonished about also how people perceived me um, at work. And so it started really opening up this journey for me. When I started getting involved with diversity, equity, inclusion, and I started um, doing speaking engagements and people started talking to me and asking me about my you know, thoughts and my process, I think they were really, really surprised at what my answers were um, and really who I was as a person. And so I started realizing that it was a detriment to me not being who I was and not sharing to people my story. Um, and so I really started really advocating, thinking about diversity, equity, inclusion, and what that meant personally, um, and what I felt personally responsible for. And like I said at the beginning of this, I think representation and sharing that journey with people is so important because I think as women, as, as, as a new natural human intentions, I think we start thinking and comparing ourselves to other people. We start thinking, man, why are that person getting promoted? Or why is this person happy? And why do I have such you know, things going on in my life? And why, is I, why am I not there? Um, and I also was looking around and I didn't see a lot of people of color um, that like me that were in positions of power. And I still, I really wanted to change that because it was imperative to me um, to make sure that our perspective was received. I thought it was really, it's a really important perspective for people to understand. Um, and understanding to where people come from. I think the empathetic of leadership is really, really important. Um, you know, we work at, in Santander, we have call centers, we have a lot that come from a really strong call center environment. I think it's really important to understand not only where our customers come from, but also where our employees come from, which is, you know, um, we do subprime lending. And so it's subprime lending of, of not being able to meet our customers in their area of need is that's really, really important, not only to me, but it's also really important to Santander. Um, so I think that that's just something that really, really resonated with me um, because like I said, whenever you know I got pregnant, I left, we went from a two income family um, to a one income family um, and it was really hard. You know, It was really difficult. I had always had like a pretty privileged life where I had a lot of opportunities, a lot of job offers. And so having to make that decision to leave my career so that I could go and take care of my son um, it was hard and it put us in a really, really hard financial space. I um, mean, so I, I think the products that Santander's offers is offering people an opportunity to get the vehicle so that they can get to work and be able to still be able to have those options. And so I think that's really important. Um, and if people like us and people of color or people that have not had us as much privilege are not in those seats, you forget that when you're listening to calls and you're listening to people. Um, so it's always good to remind, you know, people where, where you come from. All right, so education, um, like I said, I went to a Texas Academy of Mathematics and Science. It is as nerdy as it sounds. <laughs> I grew up in West Texas where you were white, black, or Mexican, that's it. Um, there was no even like for color of Mexican, it was just Mexican. Um, and so going to a academy um, was really, really different and it was from the DFW area. And so, I, you know, it was a really big culture shock and, and it really real, made me realize my mom loves love saying this is which I had all the book smarts and I had no street smarts and I thought I knew everything which is very apparent <laughs> as I progressed in age that I knew nothing I still advocately say that I don't know much um, and I'm always very open it's made me a better listener because I realized that as much as I am intelligent there's always things that people can be teaching you um, and I really realized that I didn't know much about different people and different types of cultures and so going to such a different um culturally school was really important to me. And I see that it's really important to put yourself around other people um, because that are different than you because you learn things that you would not have learned before. And so I think that that's really something that I carried with me, which is, you know, it's, it's great to like find people that are like you, but when pe you find people that are different with, than you, you really open your mind to different things and different opportunities.
So when I went to the Texas Academy of Mathematics Science, I, I, like I said, I thought I knew everything. I got a full ride to several different universities. Um, I chose to go to University of Texas at Dallas because I wanted a full ride and they also paid for um, my living expenses. And I thought I knew everything and I wanted to work and I thought that school was not that important. Um, what I realized is that whenever I had to take off time because I, I got pregnant and I had to you know, take off the time to go see my son, I, I gave up going to school because I really didn't value it. It was just so easy for me and I had gotten a full scholarship and really realizing that when, whenever we became a one income family, I realized how important like education was because, you know, that yes, I've had a lot of job offers and a lot of opportunities, but if ever a time came that I needed to rely on, you know, my resume and not having a college degree was really important. The other thing that I learned um, in this time in my life was that education, it was really important, but also the lack of representation in the ability of, of students to be able to go to certain colleges. And what I mean by that is not, you know, affirmative action or trying to get a lot of different people into colleges, but the systemic uh, really shortcomings that we have when we're people of color, which is that if you're the first time person going to college, you really don't know the things that other people know. Um, you know, my son's going to be going to college soon. I'm going to get him tutors. I'm going to have LSATs and I'm going to have, you know, SATs and ACTs and tutoring. And he'll know what, how many colleges to apply to you know, we didn't really know a lot of that. And so when I went to school, I, I started as an electrical engineer because I went to math and science school. I was really good at math and I didn't know what I was going to be at 18. And so I thought, oh, well, that's good. And then when I started working corporate, I said, I don't want to be an electrical engineer. I like, I like talking to people. I like to be around people. Um, so I actually took, and all of my electives became physics and chemistry and calculus um, and all of these really hard maths and science. Um, what I wish somebody had told me was, hey, just get your degree and, you know, finish it out and stick to it. Um, it took an extra three semesters for me to graduate because I changed from electrical engineer to a business finance degree. Um, and, and then a lot of my electives didn't transfer over. So now whenever I do a lot of speaking engagements, um, I always advocate for, you know, people of color and also students that have our first generational um, going to college to make sure that they know and they have somebody to mentor them and somebody to reach out to them um, so that they can ask those kind of questions so that when they get into college, they're really prepared and deliberate about what they're trying to achieve um, so that they're not you know, wasting their time or wasting money that they don't have. I'm really getting to it. I got my MBA from West Texas A&M. Um, at that point, I was a lot different person. So I got a 4.0. Um, it was really easy. But because I didn't connect in the same way that I connected at, at my university level um, for undergrad, um, it was really just a, a check in the box. And so I think too, whenever you go to universities and when I talk to students, it's really making sure you make those connections and make sure you're networking within your colleges so that you're really able to you know, leverage those connections later on in your career. Because I see that that's it's really, really valuable to people. All right. So I know that I haven't, I didn't really focus on what I do for a career, but a lot of my, um, like Terry said, was that I am doing a lot of finance, a lot of corporate strategy, digital, I'm working in highly right now. Um, but I do want to talk about that. You know, right now, it's a really great time to be in the auto industry, into the dealerships. There's a lot of different opportunities. People are thinking about, you know, uh, other open opportunities and dealerships are really wanting to hire really great talent. Um, so I'm going to talk about some transferable skills that I think that across the board that has really helped me. Um, those are communication, hard work, and solution-driven and a long, lifelong learner. The public speaking, like I said, um, I feel like everyone gets nervous doing public speaking, and I often get asked, how do you get into public speaking? Um, somebody asks you one time, and you say yes, and then the next time you, you know, get asked again, and you keep on going, and you build it. Um, and sometimes you fake it till you make it, you know, um, like four years ago when I first started uh, talking, um, I wasn't as known. I didn't have a lot of, um, you know, I didn't have the stout of the title that I have currently, um, but you realize that it's important and that mentorship is always available. So even if you start talking to, you know, high school students or college students, it's really important. Um, and I will say, you know, don't be so nervous. Everybody feels like this when they start talking. Um, I still feel like this cartoon here, uh, Lisa Simpson, if you can't see the screen, which is like, I want to be Little Miss uh, Springfield. I'm always like, is my hair done right? Is my makeup done right? And do I sound okay? Because um, everybody is really, really nervous, but it's something that across all industries is really valuable to you. If you can understand how to communicate really well, 
um, with executives, with people that are you know, in dealerships, wherever you're at, you just need to make sure that your communication is on par. Um, hard work, like I said, um, there really is no substitution for hard work. And I am one of the people that really advocates that as women and people of color, you will have to work harder than other people. Um, and it's, and that to me is a reality that we kind of have to accept. Otherwise you get into a place where you're like, why didn't I get this? And why didn't I do that? Um, we have systemic, you know, disadvantages um, that other people just don't have. Um, we will still have a huge pay gap as women. We have a huge pay gap as Latinas, even less than just all women. Um, white women come first, but then, you know, uh, Black women and then Latinas are last out of all people of color um, to have the, the wage gap. Um, so I always advocate that, you know, and especially with Latino culture, you're not one to shout your own, hey, good job. Um, but I always say your representation matters and we have to start changing the story. So every time you achieve something, make sure you're telling people that you achieved this and it wasn't easy. It wasn't luck. It was really hard work and you deserve that recognition. Um, so I always tell people to make sure that they're recognizing all of the hard work that they have done. All right, um, solutions driven. This is a big buzzword that you always put on your resume. And I think that uh, bringing solutions is really important, but you also have to know how to manage those solutions. So um, bringing solutions when it's not easy. So this Dilbert uh, uh, cartoon here is saying, hey, I'm bringing solutions. The boss is saying, no, I don't like those solutions. It's not good. And then <laughs> uh, he's saying, well, you know, whatever you, you need to help me. Um, and so, uh, this is kind of really what you're what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis right you have to manage up and you have to manage down um, which is you have to make sure that you're bringing solutions and even though it may not get implemented right away or you may have some hiccups that you're still able to at the end of the day execute on the things that you need to execute because um, no matter what your boss says or no matter how open a culture is um, you know it is still an organization and a business and so you need to be able to produce results um, and I feel like um, after time, if you're always just both bringing complaints and issues that, you know, gets tiring. And so you really need to focus on making sure that you're bringing those solutions. All right. And then finally, um, lifelong learner. Like I said, um, I've always been very book smart and I will continue to not be street smart. So I am always looking for people to learn from. Um, I'm always trying to listen, um, to act, to heal, um, to really discover other opportunities. Um, ask questions when you don't know, and just be comfortable with always knowing that you're going to need to learn something. Um, there's always somebody out there that is going to be able to teach you something new. So, um, and the last part is giving back. Um, I do this a lot. Um, it's also like, I think um, there's that part in your life where you're able to give back. And I'm at the part of my life where I think it is my personal responsibility to give back. Um, and I think that, you know, people put a lot of pressure on this of giving back. Um, I think it's wherever you are in your career, right? Sometimes it's, it is a privilege to be able to give back because that sometimes in your life you weren't able to give back. Um, but in any way that you can give back, you know, even if it's small steps to really try to do that to your community, I really focus on you know, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, I will also say that every time you do give back, you also get something. Um, I was at a conference the other day. Uh, we played this simulation of how it is to live um, in different uh, perspectives. Um, and it always starts out with even the people that are giving for charity or they're giving in any other asset in their life, volunteerism. It helps the other person that is less advantaged, but it also always moves them up in the game. And I think that's such a great perspective to think about is that, you know, even if you're giving back, you're helping yourself, but you're also helping somebody else. So, you know, if it's a win-win situation like that, why, why don't you not? And I will say every time I am giving back, is it if it's Leadership Dallas or any of my professional associations with um, Latino Professional for America or Conexion, our employee resource groups, it's always, always opening up doors for me. I mean, it's always opening up opportunities to meet great people and really experience different perspectives. So I would really advocate that even if you're busy and you think that there's no time to do it, it is really, really worthwhile to make sure you're giving back in those inputs. So that is it. I was trying to go through that really quick so that I can make sure I get a, um, any Q and A's, but this is my contact information. I am on LinkedIn. Um, feel free to reach out or if you have any other questions that are not answered here today, um, I am very open to connecting. And like I said, uh, new opportunities and learning, and I'm sure y'all have a lot of good knowledge that I should learn about. Um, so thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and feel free to let me know if you have any questions.